my wallet is sobbing. I can hear it. From, I can hear it in the hall now. It is breaking down, crying. Turns out that Attila, the arrogant so-and-so, he's got a fake hammer. Oh, a fake? Yeah. Whoa. As I say, dick. Welcome to episode 79 of the Allegiance podcast. One short of 80. We're getting up towards the 100 mile. Might hit that we this are. year. I don't know how many weeks are left in the year, but... Uh, we do an extra show the odd time, we might hit the hundred. Or maybe we we'll leave it to a New Year's celebration, who knows? <laughs> that would so, be cool. It's just me and you tonight. It um, is, it is. Rich is uh wandering the fields of North Wales, serenading the sheep. That's it. Yeah. He's um yeah, his potato doesn't work, so it's okay. We can get on with it. We have a little, uh, we have a little special guest uh, later on in the show. You all know who he is because he's been on every other Myth- Mythics show this week. But uh, for starters, we'll get on with a couple of things. Uh, what's been going on with you, Mal? Any crack? The Olympics <laughs> are over, so now we're yeah. into what football season again? Are we back football to the season grind? Starts on yeah, football season starts on Friday. I'm actually oh excited because uh, United. Man, I'm a Man United. This is the fan best time to be a Manchester. football fan because nothing, yeah, yeah. nothing has happened nothing yet. So. We're all on <laughs> zero points. Is that is that's the best well, time of the year? Oh, we've signed a few much needed players in some much needed positions. So oh. fingers crossed. Defenders, yeah. midfielders. Defenders. Uh, my my uh, favourite signing is Matthias De Ligt. Uh, oh, from uh, Bayern Munich. That was today, yeah. I think I saw that, was it? Yeah, well, I think we finished it yesterday or day before, but it was finally confirmed yesterday and all the pictures at the ground and all so that. So is that another things. Dutch connection because of the manager? It Dutch, is. <laughs> well, we signed <laughs> was risky, we signed, <laughs> Well, we signed uh, another guy called Masraoui as well. Um, and he's another... Um, former Ajax player so uh, gotcha. Ten Hag stacking us with the former Ajax I mean, players not that that's a bad thing I mean they obviously are very good players so uh, it, um, he, I cross my fingers for you you know I don't really have a dog in the race I don't really mind I, I like it, the entertainment of it all um, I, I used to follow Liverpool a bit as a kid and so that would be my soft spot but I'm not like Liverpool fan like Rich so I don't mind him. my best mate from Ireland is a mad Man United fan like yourself so uh, it never pains me if they do well because I know he's happy and obviously now I know you're happy. So uh, all good. <laughs> it's all it's good. been a tough few years. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That's been, well, fingers my crossed. whole youth was him, uh, you know, lording it over uh, everybody else Everyone, uh, because yeah, they yeah. were they were literally the team in the 90s and the early 2000s. So I suppose it does yeah. go in cycles, these things. And yeah. I think our American listeners who are into American football would know that better than most because they try and... They try and even up the playing field there. That's a, that's a kind of an interesting concept. I'd love if that came into football, but I also think you'd need to start football from scratch again. Yeah, uh, yeah. you uh, might take something away from it as well, though, I think. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe it's better just to be its own thing. But uh, yeah. it is interesting that everyone starts over there actually with a realistic chance in a way. Well, now you can you still you trade think. and the draft and all that kind of stuff can can mess you up, but um, I think everyone has a genuine kind of hope. And then the first games of the season start, and then it's like, ah, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is what we got. <laughs> well, I mean, and you, and you see it, don't you, in the fact that you rarely get well, mm. not since the Cowboys were as dominant as they were, and the Patriots are as dominant yeah. as they were. But you, the, at the moment, it doesn't seem like you're getting. Same winners year after year, although no, the Chiefs really winning for the last two years. There's a few years. good teams now that <laughs> generally tend to be up there and it's probably because they have a few of the, the really good players. But yeah, there is always a team that comes every year that you're like, oh, I didn't hear them last year and now suddenly they're yeah. good. Uh, it doesn't tend to happen as much in the old uh, football this side of the world. Um, yeah, my uh, my lurgy is still hanging around yeah, a little bit. Yeah, sounding a bit. Yeah. Um, it's like I have a it's like I have a fur ball from a cat. It's just like I'm fine, but like every so often I just get this cough, like tickle, and then I kind of have to cough, and it's this cough that like there's nothing there. 
You're so, right. uh, I'm half tempted to go back to the docks and just go, come on, you know, give me some anti fur ball treatment and let's get this <laughs> out of here. And I mean, is it a strain to talk? Because it feels no, like the always, talking no, is, is just, fine. It's just literally it's just sometimes I'll get a dry. tickle and then I'll yeah. be like, uh, okay, I just need to stop here for a sec. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the kid who had it first, he still has this as well. Right. Um, but he's grand otherwise. Like he, he'll do like loads of kid things, running around, you know, he's swimming, he's yeah. going up and down. And then uh, half an hour later, he'll just be kind of uh, sitting around and then he'll get a coffin fit. <laughs> then he's grand again. I, I was about to say, are you, is it, did it sort of start off with a cough? Um, mm. And then sort of just develop into, because yeah. there was a little uh, bout at work of people getting whooping cough, oh, which is known right. as the 100 day cough. Oh, geez. Um, yeah, uh, because it sticks around so long. So I wonder mm. if there's a bit of that going about over yeah. there as well. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I hope it's not that, but yeah, maybe it is. Um, mm. He seems to be okay otherwise, and I'm obviously okay otherwise, but it is annoying. It's like literally just annoying. It's like every so often I feel like here, you know, when you're chatting, I'd be like, oh, you'd be talking, I'd just like mute myself and go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, yes. before we have our uh, guests on for a, a little chat, we have some stuff to talk about. Uh, we do, I think some exciting first, stuff. Yeah, I think the first thing we'll talk about is the Legion's Gone schedule. How about that? Yes. Jeremy yes. posted that this week. Yeah. Um, so obviously... We'll be talking about a lot. We have mentioned it a lot. It's November 8th to the 10th. Uh, I mean, the actual Legion's Con where you need a ticket is Saturday and Sunday, the 9th and the 10th. And the Friday the 8th is the kind of uh, the wave reveal day and set up day, obviously, for the people that are uh, got the tables. So that's the kind of beautiful schedule that Jeremy posts a little bit hard to read here so I took uh, the stuff from the website uh, which is a little bit easier and it's day by day so day zero they're calling the first day now um, so 10am so we have to be that's that's probably the lie-in day because it's eight o'clock or nine o'clock for the to be up for the because we have a table the other days yeah. so um, we get the GCON live reveal special and um, and last year, this was from a room in the hotel. I assume it's the same room. Um, it says that uh, it'll be seating is limited on a first come, first serve basis. It wasn't too tricky last year to get it, but it wasn't as kind of, I remember it was kind of not really pushed that you could get a seat. So maybe some people didn't bother to try and that's why it wasn't. But this year, I think, as everyone knows, if it's the same setup as last year, you should be able to get in and get a seat. So there might be a bit more people. So tricky. But there was a lot of people outside in the hall that were kind of popping in and out. So yes. and there was plenty of space in that room, yeah, wasn't there? There's plenty so of space down you the could back. Easily yeah. Come in, yeah, yeah. And I think, and yeah. it was um, in turn, people got sort of first dibs, didn't they? Yeah. And were near the front of the hall. So yeah. So as as interns this year, hoping that we're in that. Uh, grouping but uh, let's see um, either way there'll be a, there'll be a new uh, wave reveal so that's going to be incredibly exciting it's going to be, we oh, it's actually so I just realised when, when I saw this that we have still actually no indication or clue what that will be not, <laughs> you know no, no, we've yeah. been focusing on we had the ashes of egg bendor and the, before that we had the mystery boxes so that was taking up all our headspace now we had the summer of cosmerium and ox crew book two that's been in our head and now we're like oh hello <laughs> yeah. the actual big thing and this is the 25th anniversary of the four horsemen 10th anniversary of mythic legions so whoa yeah and Interestingly, it says the latest offerings from Four Horsemen Studios, not the latest Mythic Legions wave, the latest Cosmic Legions wave. It's oh, the yeah. latest offerings. So that might be uh, just a neutral enough wording to, to read something into. <laughs> so uh, mm. very interesting. Um, 4 p.m. for the vendors to pick up their badges. 6 to 9 p.m. you can get your badges early if you're an attendee. I recommend to do that. So you have yep, no hassle time. in the morning. And you can go straight into the queue in the morning for maybe the exclusives. Um, or even just to get in uh, to go to see your favourite uh, 
customizer or a third party supplier or whatever on the floor. Um, then that evening, uh, there'll be some lobby displays set up at 6 p.m. ish. So uh, the stuff from GCon will be set out on the Four Horsemen lobby displays. They're always awesome. Um, there might also be stuff like the big figures, like we had Zeri last year and Olek. So yep. I'm sure they and will the, make uh, a reappearance. And will there be sure. a new one or two? Who knows? <laughs> the Ogre as well, wasn't there? The, yeah, and there's a big Kurzog as well from the previous year, year that, that was there as well, of course. So I assume they'll be bringing them and then it's just a question whether they have more, but like, <laughs> when does it get to the point when they don't have space for them? Um, customizing Studio Live. So this is a thing that uh, uh, is run by uh, Curtis uh, and some other fo- uh, amazing folks uh, every Sunday. Um and they're doing a live, um, and this is always sponsored by Wolfkin Customs. So um, you can learn more about customizing Mythic Legions. You can just hang out with people and do your own customizing painting. Uh, so this session is full because um, they obviously have a big group already, but space may open day of event. So, you know, if you want to get in there, bring your stuff you never know there'll still be chances over the weekend i'm sure to hang out with people and customize so no doubt, uh, no doubt. and then 9 p.m purple gang gang live so uh yeah i can only imagine on the third floor they've done this live i think at ishcon and maybe some other con this year so far so um yeah should be fun they know what they're doing <laughs> even though it doesn't look like it sometimes <laughs> And then Saturday, sure it'll be chaotic. <laughs> it sure will be chaotic. Saturday, uh, eight to five, the showroom's open. So that's uh, pretty self-explanatory, but let's read the description here anyway. Um, the Four Horsemen Figure Fair storefront, along with the Legion's Armory, Armory Experience will be open. So what do you think that is? Well, I'm guessing the Four Horsemen Figure Fair storefront is going to be just where they sell the, is what they're calling their booth this year. Yes, but, uh, I th- I, the I, Armoury I, I, that's Experience. That's my guess too. Yeah. Mm, I wonder if they've got, like, the chap who made... Um, oh, Paul, is it Paul Strutt? Or Strutt? Yeah, it made the... Um, Aetherblade. Yeah, Aetherblade. I wonder if they've got a few more things like that lined up. That'd be awesome. Could be, yeah. Um, now, I fear that as we were recording this on Wednesday and Jeremy does his show on Wednesday, that he's probably going to Some of this will be give revealed, more hints. Yes. So uh, let's not speculate too much because um, we might, <laughs> it might look very stale. Uh, and the two pack will be available, Gaspar and Gorich. So um, yeah, definitely look out for that. So instead of a Legion's shop table this year, there'll be a Legion's con table, I think. 5 to 7 p.m. is the... Um, Private exhibitors for sale. So this is the storefront and the army experience, armory experience. We opened for two extra hours to those with an exhibitor badge. So last year was an hour, I think. This year it's yeah. now two hours. So there must be reason for that. It is more of a, a thing with the... Yeah. You, you missed two till four. Are we going to slide over that because... Oh, of, shoot. No, no. Uh, yeah. You're right. Yeah, that was uh, me coughing. Uh, so uh, specifics to be revealed, two to four p.m. So... <laughs> Jeremy teasing as ever. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be exciting. Um, I would say a whole new way to adventure within the realm of mythos. So the best and hopefully correct um, prediction for this that I heard was that it's some sort of a miniatures thing, a role playing game thing. I hope so. Uh, I guess it's not Mythic Legion's tactics. There doesn't seem to be any mention of that here. Well, what's that, John? What's the tactics? Yeah. <laughs> we got the figures, so, you know. <laughs> we did. I suppose it, it fulfilled its purpose. So, the, uh, in, and then as I said, five to seven. Sorry, Mal, have you any I was just going to say, interesting before? thing about that is that's being held on the third floor, so the same space, yeah. I suspect, as the Purple Gang Gang uh, and some other events. Yeah, they must have there. a room up there, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, very... Intriguing. Um, 
I guess we'll be sending you to that, Mal, as uh, I'll be <laughs> definitely trying to sell stuff take a break. Yeah. at the table. I don't know what Rich's plans are this year, whether he's bringing stuff to sell or not. Um, but definitely something to, to check out. Um, and then 6 to 7 p.m., uh, there's a show called Double Jointed, who are recording a live show. Uh, I don't know them. I, I looked them up. They're a YouTube show. I recognize one of the guys. Um, he's been on one or the other of the Mythic Legions uh, shows. So, um, yeah, I'm sure it's worth checking out. They seem like, uh, uh, you know, like us. Yeah. <laughs> Podcasters <laughs> shows, you know, I, I, I know what goes into making a show. So uh, hopefully it'll be awesome. Um, bring your legions fodder. So pop and swaps, parts exchange. This is our buddy, Chris James. Uh, and the team at the Wolf King Customs held in the first floor lobby space. Definitely check that out. If you have yeah. space in your bag and you have a bunch of fodder or a couple of extra figures or parts left over from customs, bring them with you. Go to this event with Chris and the team at Wolf King. You'll get something that, you know, you're going to need for your next custom or your pop and swap. It's brilliant. You can get like you know, you think, oh, I really needed those for two years. I needed those little helmet wing adapter things. There'll be someone there that'll have them and they'll maybe take a set of arms off you for them or a set of, you know, a weapon or something uh, that you didn't even want anyway. And it's an absolute win-win situation here. That's 7 to 8.30 and I've got to say I'm determined to go to that this year. Oh yeah, I went I last, last year. year. Um, I didn't have much to offer in exchange. Um, I think money maybe was uh, what I had to I'm offer sure because it didn't bring my parts. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got some bits uh, like I honed in on the parts that I don't normally have left over when I'm customizing or that I'm always missing. So things like the stuff that like uh, like arms with the any bits with articulation, if you can see them there, certain weapons that are, are a little bit harder to get. Um, you, you'll know, you know what you want and should be able to find it there. I will be bringing Mythic and hopefully going home with Cosmic in its place. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful exchange. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure there'll be plenty of people willing to uh, to convert uh, the opposite way. It'll, it's like, is. yeah, it's like the best type of uh, currency exchange market. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Where everybody Absolutely. wins. And, and I've got like tubs and tubs of Mythic bits, whereas yeah. my Cosmic bits are a little bit lean at the moment. So, Yeah, yeah exactly. So... Yeah, a couple of, even just a couple of little uh, Ziploc bags in the, the luggage. Um, yeah. And if you're checking in a bag, put them in the check-in bag so that you don't get pulled over at security with yeah. all these little miniature weapons. <laughs> <laughs> that can be a tricky one to explain. 9pm uh, till question mark legions in the lobby. So this is what has developed organically over the years and uh, certainly will again, I hope. And uh, that's always fun. You'll find your crowd uh, or flitter between the different crowds, I think. Uh, it's generally what uh, happens, it's, isn't it? It's yeah. great. Everyone is, yeah, everyone is just sound. I mean, this is, this is why it's so good. You know, that, yeah. there's all the other stuff that's awesome. That's why it's so good because you just hang out. And if you go there and you don't know anyone, I can tell you by 9.05 p.m. that night, you'll know everybody. And well, and, and I mean, I think for us who travel as far as we do, it's even extra special, isn't it? Because, and I mean, the whole of Legion's con is because, of course, some of the guys yeah. get to see each other a bit more often. We don't. And, yeah. you know, I'm not I'm not a big social media chatty. I do chat to some people in the background on yeah. social media, but uh, this is my chance to properly talk to them and hang out with them. And I love that. That's what yeah, we're just of the bits. generation probably that, that's before finding it normal to make new friends just on uh, technology, you know? Yeah, yeah. We still need to meet people. And and then the technology chat is easier then. I generally have yeah. great chats on Messenger or whatever, uh, Facebook with people that I've met in person. Yeah. And previous yeah. to that, it's all been nice and polite, but a little bit kind of like, oh, well, you know, who's this guy? Or, you know, or do I come across as weird? Once they get to know you in person, they know you are weird. <laughs> yes, and they won't misinterpret any of your messages. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And 9pm, uh, the My Wife's Gonna Kill Me private event. Uh, they they don't know what they're doing yet, so we shouldn't even speculate. But last year was great. Uh, it was really fun, it. yeah. Mm -hmm. We were part that. of it as a, yeah. 
uh, they did a quiz. So um, who knows what will happen this year, but uh, definitely check them out. Uh, join their Patreon, I think, if you want to get in the queue for the tickets for that. Uh, you might still be able to get them anyway, but I think that's a good way to guarantee them. And then day two, Sunday. So really day three, though. Um, and day four, if you've been an intern. So again, the showroom. So this time eight to four. That's one hour less. So uh, just just to be aware there. Uh, and the same thing again. And the Cosmic Legion Amazing Alien and creature creator pack. So you'll see Mal on Sunday morning going back with the. He'd be like one of those. He'd be like one of those guys in the Sahara Desert with the you know the water jug on the head. <laughs> just it'll, it'll just be like it'll just be figures, you know. Um, <laughs> how many? What's what's the over under now, Mal? <laughs> no, I think I'm going to try and be sensible and and knowing that we'll probably get them as single packs and we're just going to miss out on the exclusive bits. Although. This is the one I want more of. This, you know, it's cosmic again, isn't it? And I'm, I'm loving cosmic. So let's say three. <laughs> if which is six, we're allowed which three, is six but, figures. So I think yeah, that's yeah. that's a good haul. Um, yeah. I'm definitely two on these um, for sure. Uh, and this year, I'm just because I don't keep them in the box, even when I get them, and I don't sell them. So. Uh, and because they're available afterwards, you know, it's not like a thing where you could get the con exclusive, bring it home, pay for the con. It doesn't yeah. really work that way. You could yeah. get a few quid more for it, but it's not worth the hassle. I'm going to get two packs at least, unbox well, them, yeah. throw them in the thing, There's going to, and then you can make, well, and you know, the two main well. characters and two other yeah. cool characters. Well, in this one as well, I don't feel like I need to get it signed. It's the one of the two that isn't, I don't want to get signed. So I, I don't necessarily yeah. need, because I won't keep one in box, then it'll yeah. just be. All but open. the box for this is awesome. And especially if you have nostalgia for that particular to, uh, thing that, that it's based on this. Uh, Could keep it flat. Alien and creature creator. Yeah, might work. Uh, might work. But then you got the plastic tray, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then 10 a.m. to 12 and 1 to 3, you've got the specifics to be revealed again held on the third floor. So look out for for maybe Jeremy's show this week. Uh, see if he's mentioned any more about that or hinted any more towards that. Um, that could be something totally different from day one, maybe, or a continuation. It reads like it could be, doesn't it? But yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, exciting. Uh the 1000 swigs, 11 a.m., they're going to do a photo of them. So this is where we've talked about doing our own swigs. Uh, Mal has done his cosmic swig, so he's going to be definitely in the photo. I have a swig that I'm going to do a custom of, and they're going to do a photo shoot. I assume it's Trevor, probably, It's going to do the photo. I'm not sure, but somebody is going to take a photo of the 1000 swigs together, or however many swigs people bring so there you go um and then four to six p.m uh, the vendors are uh, basically uh closing down uh, fans can still hang out in the lobby and 8 p.m is shooting the shelf slash off world live so they did that last year as well curtis jesse matthew Dooch, and sean scaverna so uh, i'm sure there'll be various guests uh first floor lobby space so catch them i wonder if they're carrying on doing it there because to be, they got, got quite a good show out of people wandering past and yeah and grabbing them in didn't they uh, last you were year. in it last year weren't you i, I was a little go back to uh, was it off world <laughs> or shooting the chef uh, last november you find mal somewhere there in the background yeah i'm gonna try and not get as Quite as merry as I did on a couple of the nights <laughs> <laughs> this year. Yeah. A bit more sensible. Yeah. Intentions, intentions. Right. <laughs> so that's what Legion's Con has in store. Um, We have some things in store. Uh, I'm obviously going to have a bunch of painted stuff um, already in progress. Have been painting stuff for Rich. I posted uh, this week. The last of the stuff I painted for Rich, I did a little collage picture, uh, a couple of pictures there on my Instagram and on Facebook. So 
uh, check them out. Uh, I was quite happy with a lot of those. Um, we sh- we should probably add this has worked out quite serendipitously, hasn't it? Because we talked about doing what we're going to do on this show, and then Jeremy dropped that, so it's worked out a nice yeah. little tie into it. It's great. Exactly. So. Yeah. So we also decided to do to to commission a couple of head sculpts for Legion Scan twenty twenty four. Um, and we're going to have the head sculpts for sale um, at our table, so unpainted, uh, and some maybe painted. Um, let's get into it here first. So yeah. the first one here uh, was one that I was involved in the design of. So both of these head, sculpt- head sculpts we got uh, sculpted by Edu from Prop Masters. Uh, so Prop Masters are customizing... Uh, uh, a third party sculptors and printer based in Spain. Uh, Edu is the sculptor for them. Um, and uh, Zimo does the printing and a lot of the painting. Um, so we uh, commissioned them. So we did one mythic head and this is going to be the mythic head. Um, so I hadn't seen so far and being Irish myself, a leprechaun type design. So decided, right, I wanted to get Edu, Edu to do us one. So for these head sculpts, the arrangement is we got them to sculpt it um, and we have exclusive rights to the sculpt. So we own the uh, design and the STL files um, so we can get people to print for us. And we have hooked up with the Toy Forge. So that's Anthony Houseel. He's going to print us uh, these for Legion's Con. So we're going to have a bunch of these for sale at Legion's Con. Um, I got a couple uh, or I got a few of this one also printed by Prop Masters um, that I'm painting up. So I will have uh, about eight uh, painted ones of these at Legion's Con. So if we describe it for the listeners at home, yes. I think what we'll probably have to do is when this episode drops, we'll also yeah, drop we'll a post. Yeah, we'll definitely put the pictures in, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I'd even drop a separate post, I think, if we do yeah. that. But uh, so True. To, to describe this to people, it, it's got sort of, dwarfy he could pass as a dwarf as well couldn't yeah. he for those who want yeah. him as that i wanted um, to do a kind of a gnarly leprechaun so not yeah, necessarily excellent. uh this kind of lucky charms type thing it's more yeah. of a kind of a um you know he's seen some stuff he's been through yeah. some stuff yeah and he's got a big old beard like you'd expect yeah. um and then a top hat with some awesome uh what do you call it is that what you describe it as a little bit some kind of deco so if we look uh, more closely at the head sculpt here so first in on the front uh, he's obviously got the belt but uh, this little metal kind of uh, uh, badge on the front of the hat so it's got uh, I don't know if you can see it better no it's it's got uh, this old Irish stone writing okay and it the stone writing says so it's all these lines and lines down and across uh, and that's old Irish uh, Stone Age writing for ELP which is your Legion's podcast so that's a nice little kind of Easter egg for uh, for people in there to know so uh, and that comes up on the sculpt it's also got on the side of the head a shamrock uh, (laughs) pinned into the belt yeah exactly and uh it's got a really nice belt and it's got these little, uh, you could, you could use, you could maybe paint them as cards. Um, I painted them as little metal, uh, little metal things on the ones I'm doing. Um, so maybe it could be a weapon or something, you know, a little thing he can pull out of his hat and just throw or something like that. But, uh, yeah, yeah you can um, use your own imagination. Mad Hatter with his price tag on his hat. That, yeah. Or something like that as well. So there <laughs> you, you go. Another option could be. for it. So um, I painted this guy up, uh, finished it today. So hopefully we'll do a full custom, but uh, here's my painted one. So I did this first one in very much the traditional kind of green hat leprechaun with the red beard. I'm going to do a bunch, the rest of them in the same style, but I'm going to do different colored hats. So I'm going to do maybe a couple of different shades of green, going to do a red, going to do purple, blue. Uh, so you can pick them up off us. I love the uh, 
I loved the flushed look you've given him as well to yeah. sort of show that yeah. he's been drinking and abusing himself a bit. With yeah, the... I wanted to give the impression on the paint job that, you know, he's 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 familiar with the old uh, cigarettes and or, you know, pipe and alcohol type of thing. You That's know, really he's good. he's seen a few things. He's he's had a few experiences. He uh, it generally after whatever he's doing during the day, he's uh, sitting down and telling stories, which leads into uh, the name that uh, we're going to give him. So he's going to be called Shan Aki. So uh, in Irish, that's uh, spelt really strangely. So we're going to spell it uh, more phonetically. So um, it is, uh, that is the name for an old Irish storyteller, Shan Aki. So that's what he's going to be called. Uh, so there you go. That's the little leprechaun that we're going to do head sculpt for Legion Scon. I hope to do one full custom and then I'm going to have probably eight heads for sale. Not sure if the, the custom will be for sale or not. But, um, and then we'll have a bunch of unpainted head sculpts and the deal will be uh, that anyone that's a member of the Patreon will get a discount price on the head sculpts. So say for example, if the head sculpt is, it's probably going to be 15 bucks for uh, the unpainted head sculpt and Patreon listeners will get it for 10. Something like that. You know, so you can also sign up to the Patreon on site and buy one, you know, so you get kind of a, a freebie <laughs> straight out. You know, we're we're not uh, we're not going to uh, punish you for for not being on the Patreon. You know, if you join, that's awesome. You and you're there. Legion's gone. That's the perfect time. Right, Mal. So <laughs> then we got Cosmic. So Mal went a bit crazy for Cosmic. So <laughs> tell us all about this, because. I, I purposely didn't really ask you the background of this because I want to hear it live on the show. Well, t- to be honest, I've got to give uh, Edu a lot of credit for this one. I only had, I was still formulating ideas really and they're quite vague. The one thing I knew I wanted was something that went with the Thraxian. I'll, <clears throat> we'll be getting the Thraxian not long after Legion's Con. We've got similar bodies anyway already. Um, Thraxian Scout, that is. Um and I wanted something that went with that. So in my head, I was sort of thinking smugglers, pirates. I'd gotten some of the, uh, you know, so he needed plates, but I maybe didn't want fully scaly. And But, you know, so it could also pass as other things. Um, my inspirations were things like... Um, um, I looked at the characters from um, uh, Hondo... I forget what his surname is, but the space pirates in Star Wars, Hondo something or other, I forget what his surname is. And then there's another sort of similar kind of look, kind of almost a crabby person in, I think it's called, en- oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I want to say Enemy Mine. It's an old um, sci-fi film where he gets stranded on the planet and they, they, they bond. And I must admit, when I when I was sort of thinking of it and I was discussing it through with Edu, I was I didn't have it looking this sinister. <laughs> but when it came so back des- looking so like describe this... It, describe so describe it to us then. I, well, I think it looks a little bit like it could be a sci-fi killer croc. <laughs> and uh, I love it as a result. I think it's incredibly good. Um, <laughs> so he's got a long sort of not very long but quite long drawn out chin with a mouthful of teeth scales on his head and then these sort of sci-fi goggles which this was eddie's idea and i was like yeah go for it sounds cool uh sci-fi uh sci-fi goggles which also i thought brilliant it kind of coincides with some of the ideas we were getting in the latest um the Cosmic Lore. Ox Crew release with a lot of goggles in, in and different characters in that. And when he said it, I was like, yeah, let's give... Go-. And these goggles are basically nailed into his head. <laughs> um, uh, and it looks evil. <laughs> it does, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and it's so, great because, again, that pirate smuggler element that I had in my mind because I'm slightly obsessed with space pirates and smugglers and things like yeah. that. <laughs> well, this is going to work, yeah. yeah. I can imagine really him also, pleased. like... I can imagine them a bunch of different ways, but I can also imagine them having like a cloak, you know, so using the Jacob yep. Marley cloak or, you know, a soft goods cloak uh, and just this guy. And maybe if you could even get a hat that you kind of take off, you know, like a soft goods hat maybe or something and you take it yep. off and it's like, oh my God, well, what is this horror? 
and I think those people who don't mind a bit of steampunk in their mythics, because some people do with their dwarves, I think he'd fit in with that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the goggles aren't that sci-fi that they wouldn't pass as, you know, more basic goggles. But, uh, yeah, he's, uh, I mean, I've already started formulating ideas how I'm going to use him. Yeah. I'll probably use him as part of the, and I forgot what they're called, but that little uh, band of mercenaries that we're going to get in the... Um, yeah. Um, Retailer wave, he'll probably be added to that crew. Oh, with yeah, a few Thraxian bits to make him look like a reptile, you know. So that's Fisher Rice, that's it. Yeah, he, that, I forget what yeah. that crew, what that team's called. Uh, give me a second. Yeah. Um, and but yeah. how do you imagine if, if you had one of these to paint now, how would you, what would you do? Oh, like not the process, there, but like how would you like it to, yeah. to end up looking? Now you are asking, that is one thing I'm still playing about in my head. I, I, as I say, my initial thinking was something that would go with the Thraxian Scout, so possibly so, close yeah. to matching that skin tone, that green, bright green so skin mo- a tone. more organic looking than... than yes, kind of yes, he's, yes, yeah, um, yeah, he's definitely, in my head, he's a... He's an he's an alien, but he's a fleshy yeah, sort of more of creature a, with yeah, yeah realistic you know, looking a, than a kind of a bright. Yeah. Well, I think you could people could do whatever they wanted. Well, oh, they could, um, yeah. But you know, I'm just you know, you know I'm so, just looking. Yeah, in my your, head, it's more yeah. yeah. Um, funnily enough, I probably and this again, this wasn't my original thinking because it was the original Thraxi, and I quite like the idea of him matching that Thraxian we got in the. Um, the more recent in the uh, Ox Crew Book Two wave, in terms yeah. of colours, which would make oh, him the very brown guy, yeah, brown, yeah, yeah. yeah. make him very real. The Traxian Hunter, think. that's it, that's it, yeah. And do you see these yeah. plates as more met- metal, maybe, or at the back of the head, or more bone, or could it be both, maybe? Yeah, I to me they're sort of scales, more, but I think scales. Again, okay, I think yeah, they've been done in such a way that you could paint them up as. Yeah. They would work painted as metal plates or as or yeah. as bone. As you know, that was one of the things I did sort of say I want it to yeah. look, you know, either bony or or scaly or you know. Th- so it worked with that Thraxian body, and because you could repaint that Thraxian body in certain ways to make it look different, couldn't you? And not you so could, much yeah, uh, for sure. reptilian, yeah. but uh, yeah. I think he's very cool. I think both uh, both of yeah. them are very, very cool. I think yeah, so that's fun exciting. to paint as well. And I think this one will be very good for more beginner painters as well because of the textures and, the and it, you know, there's there's detail, but you can probably get yeah, away you, with you, a it, basic it will help, paint job. It will help or, you uh, to, this will look cool if you just... Uh, primed it white and put a, like a transparent paint over it yeah. and then picked out a few of the details like the goggles or whatever um, and did a bit of dry brush and maybe uh, another little wash. Or you could absolutely be, if you're like a pro level painter, you could go to town doing all the little layers and, you know, absolutely, picking out all yeah. the... So, and I think both of those ways would look awesome. So this is the type of head that is definitely very beginner-ish friendly for painting. Very um, good. But is still possible for, you know, someone that's, uh, you know, really good at painting that will get a lot out of it too. Yeah, definitely. So if you're interested in those heads and if you want to pick up an unpainted one especially, uh, let us know. Uh, we're going to bring a certain amount to Legion's Con, but if we if we hear from a lot of people that they want one, we'll, we'll uh, you know, maybe get Anthony to bring a few more. Um and then the plan is, if we have leftovers from Legion's Con, is that probably bring them home and sell them from here. And then Anthony, if, if there's any demand uh, on the other side of the Atlantic, Anthony would be the man to to hook you up. But we'll see how they go at Legion's Con. And um, yeah, it should be fun. And then it would be very yeah. exciting if people pick them up. Um, yes. To see. Now, I Thank have also reached out to a couple think. of awesome painters in the community and and asked them if uh, they would be interested in us sending one of these heads or these two heads to them to paint and uh, maybe in advance of Legion's Con and they would be just available painted at their table or if they want to keep them, of course they can, but um, they would uh, 
post a picture of a painted version of these uh, to maybe help us promote them. So uh, that would be uh, something that will pop up between now and Legion's Gone. So a couple of uh, very cool painters will probably have them um, possibly for sale painted, who knows, and I will definitely have the uh, dwarf guy, the Legion's guy, the one that I helped to design, uh, available painted. So, um, you know, reach out to me if you're interested in that and uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, or just, re- hook, you know, go come to us at Legion's Con. We'll see what we have at the table. Uh, well, we definitely have lots of these unpainted and, uh, as I said, Patreons will get a little discount. So, well, that's fun. And what else did we think about for Legion's Con? Well, we thought about a new t-shirt and last year we just ordered the t-shirts blind and tried to sell them and we sold a bunch, but um, we also had a lot left over. So this year we were thinking of going the route of uh, gauging the demand and seeing then how much we could, we would make and then a few extra for, for the day, but, uh, you know, mostly just fulfill pre-orders. So this is the design. Um, this design actually we've had for a year, I think, Matt. Probably we yeah, had it yeah. this time last year. Yeah, same time uh, as the other maybe. one. But uh. yeah, um, so Mal has a friend that's an artist, um, and we wanted to do a shirt in the kind of peanuts style, um, which is of the three of us, um, uh, kind of in the various legions factions. So that's me as a kind of an elf, kind of a pseudo Lord Bardrick. Rich as a vampire and Mal as a cosmic with a jetpack. We haven't even had the jetpacks in cosmic yet. So it's the only way just to get in case as tall as you guys. <laughs> yeah. And just in case you're worried, we have uh, uh, asked the horsemen if this is OK uh, to print on a shirt. And they said it's fine. So um, if you're interested in this on a shirt, um, we'll be putting a post up in the next week or two. And uh, if you could reply to that or just come direct to us on, if you're on the Discord or on the Patreon, just DM us uh, or post on the Patreon that you'd be interested um, and what size you are. And uh, we'll see if we have enough demand. We will do a little run of these for Legion's Con. Sounds good. Yep. Yep. Uh, And we can possibly post a a mock-up of what this will look like on the shirt as well. uh, Yeah. Or see what it will look like. In progress, I have... uh, Oh, cool. Uh, I've set the wheels in motion for that, but didn't have it in time for this episode. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you go. So there you go. Uh, we'll post this in the next week or so. Um, I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of people have seen it and seem to like the look of it. So hopefully uh, the majority like it as well. That uh, Quite pleased there with you go. it. So. Yeah. And again, um, if you're on the Patreon, we'll try and give you a discount uh, on the shirt. So... Just so you know. But they won't be crazy expensive anyway. I think, uh, you know, the max would be 20, something like that or, or so. Um, but I've yet to get a full quote back from the supplier. So, you know, uh, use that with a little pinch of salt. So there you go. Um, that's it for our self-promotion episode this week. <laughs> um, we have a, a little interview with someone who is... Uh, being a little bit ubiquitous across the Legions community this week. I think you all know who he is, so shall we head over to him, Mal? I think sounds like a good idea. Good way to end the show. So now we have uh, someone who's, uh, Mal, he's running some sort of, uh, something to do with a goblet or something like this. Is it a Harry Potter thing? Goblet of Fire? Said he was inedible or something like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, inedible. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he doesn't like the cannibals. <laughs> no. Right, so. right, right. It's uh, Gerda Zackerman. So you might have heard him if you follow the Mythic Legions community. You might have heard of him. And if you follow it this week, you've definitely heard him. Uh, so how are you, Curtis? What are you doing then with this uh, goblet? I am, I am, it's a gauntlet ah. and, and I am running it. And, You're uh, running, ah. Yeah, so oh, I am. Why didn't uh, you say? Yeah, like I'm trying to hit up all the mythic YouTube shows in one week. So right. Um, initially it was supposed to be just, you know, seven days straight of being on YouTube. But really as it's kind of progressed, I'm hitting every single show that'll have me on. So I think by the end of it, 
I'll have done 15 shows in seven days. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Now, a couple of them are your own, but uh, otherwise, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're probably, probably yeah, good at 11. Two are my own. Everything else yeah. is somebody else's. <laughs> right. So. That's amazing. And uh, is, are you starting to feel the fatigue so far? So we're on Wednesday here now. You've, you, I think you've a no, couple of not other really. I mean, or shows today. Yeah, well, people have asked me like, you know, well, where do you get the time to do all this and that kind of thing? And it's really, I work from home, so yeah. I get to make a lot of my schedule. And to be honest, I would be watching these shows anyway. So even if I wasn't on it, my time would be taken up watching it and I would yeah. probably just be customizing while I'm doing it. So it's, it's really not taking any more time than what it normally would. Cool. So. Yeah. And, and you know, from running a show that actually being on a show can tend to be a bit easier if you're used to running a show because you'd, it's usually the show host that needs to do a little bit of prep and uh, mm-hmm. run the show. So you just need to be there and uh, answer questions and chat and whatever, but, uh, Sounds good. And uh, is this uh, proving any sort of a point or is it just a challenge or? It was uh, something Purple Gang Gang challenged me to ah, a couple months okay. back. And, and we didn't know if it would be possible because there's there's certain days a week where it's kind of hard to get something in there. But, uh, you know, when Jeremy asked me last week to be on Mythic uh, Conversations on Wednesday, I was like, well, that's that's really the toughest day of the week. Um, so if I've got that down, let's see if we can make the rest of it happen. And then, then it just kind of fell into place. So very good. And I saw we were on the bonus section. So does that mean that we don't really count or <laughs> no, it just it, that we hadn't answered you or what? I, I hadn't know. I didn't know when we were going to record or when it was going to air. So I didn't, ah. you know, the rest of it was kind of like a TV guide kind of okay. thing where people I'm, would go, I'm, you know, oh, well, this is when I tune in to watch it live kind of. So. I'm disappointed because I misread it as the bonus section. I was like, it's because he's in the shower listening to us. That's why. Uh, and, I could have uh, done this from the shower. <laughs> we, we should have probably arranged that. Yeah, uh, that would have been, yeah, it would have been a little bit scary with the electronics and stuff. You know, uh, I don't want to electrocute you live on our show. It's not that kind of a show. You, you, you've watched it before and listened to it before. So, you know, it's uh, we try and they relatively PG, so I think. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> blowing someone up in the shower. Okay, yeah. that's the Patreon episode, man. Yeah, we've got that sorted. So, whenever Curtis feels uh, a little bit uh, like one of those uh, daredevil types, we can we can do Curtis from the shower, or maybe that's it. I have to research water, yeah. water, 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 Oh, yeah, that's God. definitely getting clipped and putting on a <laughs> purple gang gang. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to give others content. Yeah, I, I even uh, was it. I even there's a box on YouTube when you upload your videos, and there's there's one you can do a thing where you don't allow people to to use the content to remix or whatever. And I always uncheck oh, that yeah. because I know it's like you know we're we're happy to get people views, and obviously if. And a bigger channel or another channel uh, would remix our stuff uh, that will draw people to our channel so I don't see the downside of that even if it's uh, sometimes me or Mal or someone just <laughs> saying Those something out of context and, gang, uh, gang lads are at it again <laughs> yeah, <whatever. laughs> you know if Billy Beige can embrace it so can we there you go. <laughs> I mean he's part of the gang now is he uh, he's on the show regularly in some yeah. form or fashion. So. so that's all you have to do, folks. Just get absolutely hammered when you're on the show, fall off your chair and uh, kind of leave a little bit of a worrying situation where people don't know if it's death or drunkenness. And uh, right. then you're uh, you're on the show. Sounds good. <laughs> right. Well, uh, Curtis, to get to, to maybe more... Uh, on brand stuff here, I wanted to talk to you while we had you about a couple of customs you did and uh, also a little bit about, uh, I suppose, related to this, what you're planning for Legion's Con or what's what's the crack with that. Okay. So the first the first up I have here is your uh, Frost Ogre kind of, what would you say, is goat dude or? It's a bull, isn't it? It's a bull. bull. Yeah, bull. Minotaur bull, yeah. Minotaur. Yeah, um, so this was... Uh, this was one you posted this week. Um, I believe that shield is from a one sixth figure. Yeah, it's from the the Fizen TB League. I think is what it's called. And you repainted it. Or? Yeah, it, it normally comes in kind of like a, I guess like a bronze or gold goldish color. Oh wow! Right, so. nice. And uh, what's the inspiration for this guy then? So 
Um, so Zombie 13 had done one for, he actually did two of them for Travis Bowles a long time ago. Um, and it was, he did one on, uh, both, both are the tower. He did one on that. And then he did one on Archimedes and the one on Archimedes was like, a you know, kind of similar to this. It was like a frost, uh, bull and I just loved it. And it, it's something that as soon as I got into the line is one of the first things I saw and I saved in a file and I was like, man, someday I want to do one like that. Um, and you know, I was just kind of looking for the parts cause that, the yoke on that and the head are from my action figure customs. And so oh, that's very so hard to get nowadays. To get um, but I put kind of a request out there to the cabal, like, Hey, anybody, you know, got these pieces and luckily Eric Miller did. Um, and so he, he did a trade with me and, um, and then it, from there it was just kind of making it happen. So. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I love the, I've done a couple of frost uh, customs as well. I love that kind of style and I hope that, horsemen give us the odd one in the future um but uh, it's difficult to get past some of the customs like this one and uh minotaur that's is that one of your favorite type of uh it is um i i played uh world of warcraft for like 10 years in fact ah, that's that's awesome. how i met my wife was on world of warcraft oh. um and my my first character uh on that was a tauren a you know a big minotaur character so yeah um yeah and i'm i was born in may i'm a taurus so it's just kind of oh, a thing that, the club. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, so. we're all bulls we're stubborn bulls <laughs> <laughs> and uh what what blue is that is that a mixture of blues or is it's there... a mixture of blues it's um some citadel some so flat um it, it's i mean there's like one the one blue on the shield is a tamia a uh, clear blue on a silver. Gotcha. Um, and then there's some, uh, there's probably like five or six different blues on here and, and mixtures in yeah. between. So, yeah, when I saw it first, I was like, yeah, he, he didn't get that blue out of a bottle. It just, no. doesn't, it doesn't look like it. it. And that's, that's part of uh, when you get better at customizing, I think is that you realize there is paint matches out of the bottle, but sometimes it is playing around and also, making a really good looking color can sometimes just come from uh, from mixing the other ones. And what is this really uh, vibrant blue around the the top of the, the knee there? Uh, that is a uh, so flat. Uh, I can't remember which blue it is, like ultramarine blue or something like that. Um, gotcha. But it, it's so flat. I use a lot of so flat paint yeah. and Citadel. Um, so yeah, a lot of it is that. Awesome. And you did awesome on the horns as well with the, the fade in from the bone. Like Thank that. you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, one of the, th I, I started painting more kind of animal uh, heads and stuff last year and doing research on, you know, stuff that occurs in nature. You notice that there's a lot of different colors. Like if you look at, you know, let's say like a wolf's yeah. head or something, um, it's not one color. It's not two colors. There's like several different colors. So yeah. it's one of those things with like, you know, just as I go into something like this, obviously it's blue. This isn't something that's going to occur in nature, but I try to keep that same kind of idea that, Hey, you know, let's build up with several different layers of different colors um, so that there's some, some depth and texture to it. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I never thought uh, maybe five years ago that I'd be Googling, uh, you know, lizard eyes and uh, <laughs> you know, this kind of stuff. <laughs> but if you look through my Google search history, there'd be a lot of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. What does it, yeah. A fish eyes as well. That was another one. I remember <laughs> I was painting something for Rich. I was like, never, I never really, you know, you know what a fish eye looks like, but you never really know uh, until you actually look it up if you want to paint it. Um, Right, and then this absolute uh, beast here. Incredible so yeah. this, this didn't. So this was the picture you posted first, um, mm. and along with a couple of other kind of nice glamour shots like this. So it's an elephant uh, with a kind of a chariot thing on top of it, uh, with two figures um, and a kind of red tarpauling over it. Um, Looks like uh, you've painted shields there, uh, or banners. Sorry, like uh, like that you get with some of the figures, um, and a lot and a bit of string, string to put it together, and various stuff. It looks mental, um, <laughs> and really well done, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll talk. Uh, I have a few more pictures as well of the kind of behind the scenes that you posted then subsequently, um, which I think people found really really cool. Um, 
But what was the so what was the inspiration behind this first before we talk about the actual process? So uh, Walter DeMarco did that elephant head um, for a troll a while back. And, mm-hmm. and it's one that um, I know it's it's a hassle for Lynn to print because this thing is just so massive. It takes a lot of resin. And, you know, you can get if you have one little mistake in it, that's a lot of resin to waste. So I had to bug him for a while to get one of these. Um, and and what, then I, I think this retails probably around 70 on uh, when he does do it uh probably yeah um so i i ended up getting the head and then i'm like okay well now how am i going to use this because i've seen a lot of people just kind of paint it up and put it on a stone troll or something like that and i'm like i want to do something a little bit you know more unique with it and so i was racking my brain and i actually messaged len i'm like man i just want to do something really cool with this and i don't know what and he said, well, what about those uh, elephants from Lord of the Rings? And I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings guy. I mean, I like the movies, but I'm not, you know, I don't live and die by them. So I had to go back and watch it. And I was like, OK, yeah, these things are cool. And it, it's an elephant with, you know, kind of this uh, big carriage thing on top and some archers and a driver. And I was like, OK, well, you know, how can we make this work? And initially going to try to put like a carriage on the like the back of the the troll i was like this is just isn't going to work i need to get this thing on all fours but a troll doesn't have all fours so then it was a matter of trying to find a way to make this you know take take the arms off and put some extra legs on and and make it into a four-legged you know creature and then my goal here was to try to use as many mythic parts as possible um, so really the only thing in here besides the twine that isn't mythic are the three head sculpts and the one torso, uh, chest piece on the, uh, on the archer. Everything else in this is, is all mythic parts. Wow. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So, um, we'll just flick forward here a little bit. So there's another, uh, kind of front facing shot. Um, there's a close up of the guy. I mean, and you know, if you just posted this custom, people would have already been like, wow, that's awesome. And, you know, you did freehand on the legs and things like this. And uh, obviously the armor is, is quite uniquely done. How did you do that armor, the the kind of brownish? So the, um, the, the armor there was, uh, I think it was like the... Sp- spiky legs if i remember right from like the like the orcs and stuff like that but i dremeled yeah. all the spike edges off of it um and then i used there's a citadel uh texture paint called sterling mud and i just kind of put that all over it and then nice. um you know painted it up because i wanted it to look similar kind of the dirty kind of tribal um look that they had in the movie so um use some of that same texture paint on the torso there um so you can kind of see it's a little yeah. bit different i though that torso normally has like rivets on it so i cut all the rivets off um and then i took one of those neck pleat pieces from like a goblin and just turned it upside down and, yeah. and used it oh, there yeah. so wow. um <laughs> See the creativity in this community. Uh, this is how you made the chariot then, or, or the kind of structure for it. So this is, yeah. I mean, anyone that can get back adapters, uh, wing adapters into a custom uh, deserves uh, some sort of an award. So uh, congrats on that. Uh, and these, I guess, were spear uh yeah, spears uh, cut up, and I, I was just kind of playing around with parts to see what I could make work. Um, and then I was like, oh, wow, the spears fit pretty much perfectly into a back adapter or, yeah. you know, wing adapter. So, okay, now now that I've done this, what can I do with this? How can, how can I incorporate this somehow? And so I just put a bunch of those together um, and then just weaved them together to make a floor for that that carriage. So are they then after you put them in, are they glued or? or so if uh, the basically after I got all these sections, like the one that you're seeing there, I then used mm-hmm. another spear um, to hold them all together. So I put a spear kind of um, and then glued that together with it um, to hold those together as a floorboard. And then I weaved everything, uh, which that weaving part, I mean, this whole custom took like two months. Um, so I was like really ready to be done with it by the time it was over. Um, but most of that was the weaving. The weaving just took forever. So Yeah, uh, I can't imagine uh, you had previous experience in weaving. So <laughs> no. <much>. no, no, <laughs> no, that was new for me. Uh, epoxy sculpt then at the bottom uh, or yep. kind of uh, so yeah. is this a new thing for you or 
No, I've used a pox, poxy skull before, but like the um, so the neck on the troll is kind of more towards like the the front, and I needed it because he was going to be on all fours. I needed it to be higher, so I had to actually take the entire neck assembly out and then drill a hole in his back and put the neck Whoa. assembly there and then yeah. cover up that hole. Um, and then while I was at it, the way that the troll is built, it doesn't have kind of that that big elephant belly that you want. And so I, I just added some extra epoxy sculpt there um, to make it, you know, more of a kind of a rounded belly. And then, you know, this is before I've, you know, dremeled and sanded and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's yeah. kind of the initial. And then uh, you may notice there too on that, the, I, I ended up cutting all the toes off because yeah, I wanted uh, it to I look more like well. elephant uh, yeah. feet. Yeah. So it's, there's, it's uh, really good there's as well. the toes. Is this, uh, is this when just after you've cut them, have you sanded them yeah. there as well? I, I cut them, sanded them. Uh, this is after I've sanded them and then I went and painted them. Yeah. Uh, and this is the horrific <laughs> uh, situation that you left here. Because mm -hmm. those sculpts are so realistic, the, the, the fingernails and the, the, <laughs> the, the on the troll. <laughs> yeah. It just looks like, whoa. <laughs> Um, it just yeah. i wasn't initially thinking of doing that but then as i got it on all fours and i looked at it i yeah. was like i was like these toes look kind of weird on yeah, this gotcha. so yeah yeah it I does look better um it's one of those uh no turning back now moments is what <laughs> right thinking, isn't it where you're like yeah. oh god i'm gonna do this. yeah well it's, <laughs> as soon as i cut that neck out and put it in its back i'm like well this, this is either gonna work or it's not but yeah. <laughs> this is never gonna be a troll again yeah so yeah um and then this is the final uh, product here uh, again. Yeah, so like um, the the carriage there, you've got those back adapters that we looked at. They're weaved mm -hmm. together, and then underneath there, the those like logs. That's the the handles for the trolls, the troll weapons. I got four of those logs yeah. from there under it, um, awesome. and then like the top there, the fabric. That's a actually a cloak from the headless horseman, the original headless horseman. Right. Um, wow. And then, you know, you've got like different soft goods and stuff on there. The, the one, one of the things that I'm really proud of is on the driver. He's got like on the, in the movie, he's got like this big giant kind of battle standard that's behind him. Yeah. And the shape of it, I didn't know how I was going to accomplish that without just kind of sculpting something by hand. Uh, but one of the things that Emil told me is, you know, really just try to get the overall look of it, the overall shape, so that if, if you didn't have any detail or anything, just that the shape is right. So what I ended up using is in the middle, there is a dwarf shield, like the one that has the big face on it. And I just yeah. cut the sides off. Um, and then I used a long bow on the top I and then a crossbow the top, yeah. underneath of it. Um, and then the, the like wooden spikes are from axes um, that I, I just kind of trimmed down. Um, and weaved in there and then the, the topper piece on there, they've got like a, it's like a bird on theirs, but, um, I just used one of the head topper pieces from mythic legions. So, uh, yeah, I think you find these maybe on like a vampire sometimes the Lord Ragul or the, and then he's standing right there. The, the, the little platform that he's standing on is two shields, like the kind of like the Templar shields, uh, that are cut in half and then put together. And one of the things that I found out that was interesting is the little peg on a shield is the same size as the peg hole on their feet. So, <laughs> nice. so yeah. Awesome. You, so he's basically standing on the pegs for the shield. Amazing. Someone now needs to do the diorama of uh, Legolas <laughs> sliding down the stairs then with the, on the shield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be a good one. Um, so what's the plan for this for Legions Con? Is it a big display piece at your table? Is it yep. up for sale? Yeah, it'll be my, at my table. It'll be for sale. I'm going to, you know, sell the whole thing as one, though. I'm not going to piece yeah. it out. Um, so if somebody wants it, great. If not, I will definitely bring it home with me. So and how how does it set up for transport? It's, it's pretty solid? It's, or? it's everything. I'm going to have to probably take the figures off. But other than that, the rest of it is pretty solid. So awesome. Well. Uh, that's awesome. And what else is in store without, if you, if you obviously have some secret projects, that's cool. But what else uh, is in um, store for Legions Con that you're, are you yeah, I mean, I, heads and stuff, the kind of usual or? I don't know that I'll get too many, if any heads done. Um, yeah. I've been really just focusing on full customs. Um, mm -hmm. Last year, I, I 
kind of challenged myself to do a bunch of heads for Legion's Con, and they did all right. But there's a lot of people there selling heads, yeah. um, and I, I missed kind of just creating my own full customs. And so yeah. this year, uh, that's all I've been working on because I don't have to worry about filling a table really yeah. because I've got my wife doing all the soft goods and stuff. Yeah. So that takes a lot of pressure off of me to where it's like, okay, even if I only get, you know, 12 customs done this year, that's fine. Cause she's going to fill the rest of the table up with the stuff she's doing. So it allows me to kind of work on the things that I want to work on. Awesome. Yeah. So that's Darla with the art by Ackerman uh, yep. capes. And is, is she doing uh, more than capes this year or? She's got a few things in the works. Um, oh, she's got awesome. one special project with Stephen Bashotti that'll be yeah. at his table. Um, and she's she's got another couple things that she's working on besides capes, but she will have a ton of capes, um, some hooded, some not, some for dwarfs, uh, 1.0s, you know, all that. So even some ogre ones. Um, oh, you know, oh for, that's a nice. For the, not... um, yeah, the, I don't know that I've told this anywhere yet, but um, the uh, Greg's figure, the Sir Uxak. Oh, yeah. Um, she's already got some made for that, and she, we've already sent one to Greg. Um, oh, so he, got, he got the first one. So, brilliant. and then we yeah, also yeah. have some for Baradak, the the other big guy. Oh, yeah, the other All-Stars. he's coming yeah. in All Star Six. That's cool because Greg will maybe because uh, he's in you know he works for the studio part time. He he might be there when the first lot comes in. I'm sure he will. Yeah, he'd be sniffing well, around that trailer for sure. <laughs> yeah, and uh, for anyone who uh, who hasn't seen Darla's capes as well, the quality yeah. is absolutely top top notch yeah. as well. I, I've got two, and uh, I'm a little bit the opposite to you this year, Curtis, but more because. Uh, um, I bought a lot of heads last year. Mm-hmm. In Scon, so I was tr- I'm trying to paint them up. Uh, I might get a few customs done, but I have two of Dara's capes that, capes that I'm hoping to weave into those customs uh, one way or another. But they're really nice. I've put them on uh, figures just to you know test them out and see how they look. And they're top notch and Thank they you. were good value. I don't know if she's uh, learned and is going to jack up her prices, <laughs> but uh, no, I think I think we're going to probably keep them about the same. I mean, yeah. um, I think at Mesquicon we were selling them for twenty dollars a piece, or if mm-hmm. you bought two, then we would lower it down to fifteen. So if you're buying yeah. multiples, you get it for fifteen, which I think is a pretty good price. Yeah, so. that's what I got two for. I think two for thirty then, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I would have probably got more, but I think uh, they were pretty much out and it was yeah they, they sold the pretty quick so yeah, yeah she's oh, yeah. she's got a lot ready for leaders con already though um and she's it, it, what i've been telling people is is that if you're just looking for a cape in general um you can show up anytime during the weekend i guarantee we're going to have some capes but if you're looking for a specific color yeah she's only making about a dozen of each color so gotcha. if there's a certain color you're looking for you probably want to get there early cool and is, did she always do a bit of uh, sewing and stuff like that, or is this kind of something? Um, I mean, it's something that she is, you know, has a history of doing, you know, making clothes and things like yeah. that. Oh, okay. Um, but it's it's basically, as I was collecting, I was buying some soft goods from, like, Max Bird and things like that. Mm-hmm. And um, she, they would come in, and she'd be like, well, can, can I see that real quick? And she would look <laughs> at it, and she'd go, well, you know, I, I could make you stuff like this. And I'm like, oh, man, that would be great, especially yeah. if you could do it in this color or this and that. Yeah. And one of the things that I typically had problems with with other, um, you know, soft goods, including the Four Horsemen ones, is sometimes the wire is just a little too thin to where it doesn't hold the the pose that you want it to or the shape that you want it to. Um, So we tested out a lot of different wire to get the one that, you know, we we feel like is is best for it. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like it. Uh, and oh, and yeah. it allows me to have any soft good I want for any figure that I want. Yeah, so. you're, you're definitely, <laughs> yeah. you're bonus, definitely yeah. spoiled for that. <laughs> and uh, you get those wires at like kind of a arts and crafts store? Or? Uh, I think she gets them typically at Hobby Lobby. Yeah. Cool. So Awesome. Right, uh, Curtis. So uh, in order to let you go on your further uh, travels along your gauntlet, uh, I did a little quiz to entertain us going out of here. So, um, awesome. uh, Mal, you can do the score. So it's one point per correct answer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and just be I'm careful not, not to click ahead on the. Yeah. There's no time gotcha. or anything. We can discuss it. These are mostly mythic questions with a few surprise ones thrown in. Okay. So, and mostly multiple choice. So, you know, 
no pressure, Curtis. No pressure. All right. <laughs> oh, look, he's got it. He's taking a drink. People, he's, people don't come to me for the knowledge, by the way. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I thought I'd. You know, I'm sure a lot of the other shows are trying to put you out of your comfort zone. So this is this is my way. Uh, All right. So first one, name this figure. So it's one of the Gothotropolis birds, um, and it's a, a blue blue one. That's all I'll say. Uh, so, and the, and the um, options are A, Osperius, B, Cyanicus, C, Phoenicus, and D, Blurius. Um, I have no clue, but I'm going to go ahead and say A. <laughs> a, Osperius. And uh, Amal, any clue there? For I'm you? going with B, because if D is a real name, I'm, I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Cyanicus, so that was B. So hard luck, Curtis. Um, yeah, D is one I made up myself. Yeah, I got but, the feeling. <laughs> yeah. But I also thought Cyanicus was a bit made up because you know cyan is is also well. That's what that I do. figured it was too on yeah. the nose, but yeah, that's cool. So there's the birds. When most of us actually have no clue of the birds. So Legion's cast, one of your future stops in this oh, pub, but actually before this. Uh, what is the last episode of Legion's cast listed on Source Horseman? So Ooh. is it A, 31? Is it B, 41? Is it C, 51? Or is it D, 66, which is their latest episode? Uh, I'm going to say 41, B. 41, B. Mal, any clues on this? 31. No? Guessing. Okay. It is 41. There you go. He's got one right. So I think that's probably when Emil came in and maybe Jeremy has some beef with him. No, I think it's when they went to YouTube. So how many Mythic Legions figures are there in the special release section of the website? So these are you in know, the Mythic your, special release. The Mythics. So this is, okay. for example, the Legions Con figures yep. and all the ones that don't really have a home as of yet. Um so is it A9, is it B12, is it C15, or is it D18? Now you can take your time and go through them if you want. Um, I'm going to say, f- wait, no, hold on a second. <laughs> Mal is looking around at his shelves. <laughs> I'm going to say 15. 15. Mal? I think he's right. Nine or twelve, but okay, he might be right. Yeah, oh, it's nuts. fifteen. So there we have it. We <laughs> even have the here blue Hagnon, the the two uh, Legion's Cons figures for this year, Gaspar and Gorich, Lee J. We have the Furious Four, um, Sir Gerard, uh, the skeleton, the recent one, the unknown one, um, the undead of Vikenfell, the Valiant Knight, Vorgus, and Waltor. So yeah, the, I was thinking about it, and you're, uh, you know, Source Horseman. They update it before we actually have the figures in hand. So I'm yeah. like, you know, with the Chris and the the George one, yeah, mm-hmm. gotcha. that's bringing it over the edge. There you go. Um, right now, this one is uh, a tricky one, but it's it's there's only two answers, possible answers. How many Horseman figures that we have been able to pre-order are there? Are they currently in some stage of production? And that includes the latest cosmic wave. So okay. is it less than 50 or is it greater than 50? So you're saying from pre-order till till the time yeah. we get it, basically. Yeah. So like I think Necronomus is the next one sledged <clears throat> to be. So uh and we have Cosmic Book Two. Uh all right. Oscar. We have so we've got Necronominus. We've got All Star Six. We've got um, that last one that they just did. Uh, not the Cosmic, but Ashes. Yep. And the Cosmic. I don't know if that's Red quite Sims 50. Well. And, well, oh, and the the Legion's Con exclusives. Rising Suns as well? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That definitely. I'd say greater than 50 then. Greater than yeah, 50, yeah. It's greater than 50 as well. 62. Yeah. I actually thought it yeah. might be more than that, to be fair, but yeah. <laughs> and I remember doing this calculation maybe yeah. two years ago when we were waiting for Lithia, like just mm-hmm. my own kind of, and it was around the same. So I think sometimes they run at this kind of uh, level. So there you go. Gotcha. Um, how many figures are on the cosmic Oof. checklist? 
So is it 31, 41, 51, or 61? And that's including the special releases, right? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't include the weapons packs and, and the hands packs and all that stuff. Gotcha. Um, I'm, I'm going to say 41. Right, Cosmic Mal, what do you think? I'd have gone 31 because they're usually about six figures away, even we've had about... Oh, oh wow, nicely done. It's four to get this. <laughs> in, including accessory backs, there are a total of 47 items. There, so nice. There you go. Um, right, he's not here, <laughs> uh, but which is Rich's favourite Mythic Legions figure? Is it Arathir? Is it Valak? Is it Balam? Or is it Vampire Knight? I think I know you guys have given him a lot of shit for not liking 2.0s but then <laughs> liking 2.0s I think it's the Vampire Knight yeah so you're locking it in yep you're right five <laughs> points to Curtis <laughs> now if he was here he'd probably claim it's some other figure but uh, no, in all no, the man. recordings I've done with him the yeah. Vampire Knight has he's always been his favourite he's very proud of favorite, liking so. that Vampire Knight he yeah. that's the one is. vampire I don't have I've got is everything it? else in that, that faction ah. yep. I think he really like likes the head sculpt it's it's slightly uh, yeah uh, scarier right which of oh, these is the boy. Luxembourg flag? No, sorry. I'm sorry to, to do this to you. I know it's tough for people from America. Um, if I gave you the, the state of whatever, Massachusetts or something, or, or Pennsylvania, you'd probably get that quicker. So there you go. So it's, it's hard to do this on audio, but uh, yeah, we've got... Uh, well, I can just say what the other flags are. There's, there's a flag of uh, France as well. There's a flag of Belgium as well. And there's a flag of Germany. And there's the flag of Luxembourg. I think, I mean, you've got two with the same colors at the top and then two with the same colors at the bottom. But mm -hmm. I know for sure it's not one of the ones at the bottom. So I'm going to go A. Hey. Yeah, right. A is my answer. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, A is my final answer. It's C. Dang it. <laughs> so... To go back, A was Germany, B is Belgium, and D is France. Um, yeah, I knew it wasn't the last one, and so I was like, ah, yeah, damn it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, just to, to really mess you up here, uh, You've got which one of these one. is the Wales flag? Um, My and, goodness. Uh, there is some funky flags here. These are all flags from countries. Yeah. And and you're gonna describe them for the audio listener. Uh, so there's one with the uh, white and white and green uh, with a red dragon on it. There's a, there's a red one with just two white figures, one chopping the head off. The I one. don't think it's that one. <laughs> <laughs> there's a green and red one with a kind of cool uh, uh, crest on a shield on it. And there's a diamond uh, kind of like like when you cut a diamond uh, across a rectangle. Uh, yellow and red uh, with a kind of a three-legged woman looks like a three-legged figure I don't think it's the the weird legged one um, and I don't think it's the two you know guys fencing or cutting the one guy's head off the first one seems a little bit too um, Asian inspired I don't know in between A and C but I think I'm going to go C Right. Uh, it's A. Ah, you, go. you nearly got it. The Welsh very, Welsh uh, dragon. Gosh, Just think yeah. of Welsh dragon. They, they, they're... Gotcha. So uh, C was Can Portugal. I Can I have a guess? D. D, D yes, D, yeah. It, is that a stone? Is that a real flag? Yeah. Oh, wow. Is uh, it what? Who did you, who did you say, Mal? Sorry. Estonia, is it? No. No, it's, okay. Uh, Sicily. Oh, wow. I knew it was is a Mediterranean that, is a country. real one too? And uh, B is a, is a real one as well. <laughs> and it's uh, the West African flag. <laughs> wow. Okay. And it's the description. Right. This unusual flag is commonly and wrongly attributed, attributed to the Benin Empire. <laughs> it is one of four currently held at the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, London. This I, is some okay. uncertainty about the exact origin of the flag and whether it came from Benin itself or was used 
by the forces of the Itsikeri allies. So I you totally go. thought you made that up with clip art. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, 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 I mean, I, I've never seen uh, the flags of B and D before either. But I just looked up uh, bizarre flags of the world, and, and, and the D looks like if uh, if you yeah. told AI to make a flag, yeah. <laughs> it's like make me a cool flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's no way. I mean, I would never have got those ones. I only know the, the fairly regular ones. So there we go. Uh, so how many did he get in the end then? I, I scuppered him with the... I think it was four with or the flags. five. I lost four track out of eight. You're all right so, with the Legion's yeah, ones. You did, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Did. To be fair, that's all you needed to do, Curtis. You needed to get the Legion's ones, right? <laughs> so uh, that's awesome. Anything else uh, you got to plug, uh, apart from the various shows you're on? Or? Uh, I mean, I don't... Uh, I don't know when this is going to air. I just want to say uh, thanks to everybody that, 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 uh, you know, had me on this week. Um, everybody that put it up, put up with uh, listening and seeing me all week long. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I will try not to do this again anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks for coming on, mate. Uh, we really cool. enjoyed having yeah. you. Right, so that was uh, that was Mr. Ackerman. There you go. Um, we had a little bit of fun with him. Uh, we had a lot of fun with this episode. I uh, hope you liked all the stuff that uh, we talked about at the start and our chat with Curtis. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, not sure what we're going to do yet. Let's see what crops up in the Legions community or more. Uh, Patreon-wise, we do have a plan to talk about the various reveals that have kind of come during the summer. Uh, Rich should be back from Wales next week. Uh, he's very keen uh, that we go through a lot of uh, non-Legion stuff. So we'll put that out on Patreon, uh, hopefully in the next week or two, uh, for all you lovely people. So that sounds good, Mal? Uh, yeah, that'll be a fun one. Uh, dangerous, because I've already overspent again this <laughs> month. So Every seventh of every month, Mal's like, oh, the credit card's already for this month. Uh, and the last and few months, it seriously has been. It's ridiculous. You know, I need to get a grip. Like, obviously, Rich and I know kind of figs you're looking out for or that you're kind of thinking of, you know, maybe say legions-wise that you might want an extra of. We're saying, oh, there's one for sale in one of the groups. And you're like, yeah, thanks, guys. But <laughs> Well, the day <laughs> might, this drops... <laughs> Yeah, the day this drops, there's something uh, going up, isn't there, on Frazetta Girls? Oh, there so. is the Frazetta Girls. Oh my goodness, what is that? The yeah. Norseman? The is Norseman. It? Yeah, yeah. That does look cool. Now, it and we can say cool. that now because Rich is not here to poo-poo us. <laughs> yeah. He's already poo-pooed us in our chat. <laughs> yes. But this, but this does look really cool. Um, if you can get it, what was the, what was the wolf? Or sorry, what's his name? The first guy. A dark wolf. Dark so, wolf. Yeah, what this, was he? This will... Sixty odd was he? I can't remember now. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, 60 so, sounds about right. Yeah. I can't, I can't and remember. And Tigra exactly is that. obviously Tigra uh, was she's a little bit on the way. She was 80, she? I think. So, yeah. 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 Um, yep. Yeah, she's, she, I've had shipping notice for her, although she still looks like she's sat in some warehouse in Florida. Yeah. I saw a post or, today <laughs> on one of the groups where apparently they're doing the shipping labels, but they're still waiting for the, the container. Yeah. So. Pick up. Yeah. Um, yeah. This will be the third one then, and it looks... Yeah. And these scale look like Legions pretty well, tweets. don't they? They do, they do. Um, for me, they're a little skinnier than Legions, but gotcha. uh, they look great. It's different type thing. of... But they're not, like, totally True. out of scale either. Oh, no, no, no. They fit better than many other things do, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And similar sort of style to the joints and that sort of thing gotcha. as well, so... Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. um I'm I'm tempted by that one myself because I have the dark wolf and uh, I think this would go well with it. I yeah. skipped Tigra, so um, yeah, it could be tempted. Could be tempted. Let's talk about it on Friday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Well, Enjoy this yeah. week's show. Yeah, you got to say uh, Rich's uh, line, Mel. Uh, stay safe out there. Which is originally your line. <laughs> well, I was going to say since we've had the the inevitable Curtis. I am Iron Man. Guys.
skeleton? <laughs> <laughs> I have. 